Welcome back to Structure Fishing. I'm Jim Shell. We're going to continue the Structure Fishing Workshop and go with this Part 7 Lake Types. Lake Types, uh, Buck has a section on it in the home study course and it's often overlooked by a lot of people. A lot of people just fish natural lakes so they don't spend much time looking at, at the, this chapter uh, part of the workshop. But it's a very important part of the workshop. Even if you don't fish lowlands or highlands or flatlands, it's good to know what kind of structure situations you're going to face in all those lakes. It's going to give you a better understanding how fish use structures. Even though you've never fished a lowland or highland, it's good information to have, good information to know. It's going to make you a better fisherman. Uh, back about a year ago, we used to have an online uh, club called the Breakline Club. Unfortunately, it no longer exists, but about a year ago, I did a presentation for the club on lake types. So I'm going to show you that for this uh, part of the workshop. Uh, today's topic is going to be about reservoirs. And uh, what gave me this idea was back in, I want to say it was a March, uh, January meeting, a couple of meetings ago. I can't remember what led into it, but we started talking about Lake Wisconsin and what type, I think someone had asked a question, what type kind of reservoir Lake Wisconsin was. And it was funny that we had many different opinions. I believe I said it was a flatland, someone else said it was a lowland, and someone else said it was a highland. And uh, it was quite an interesting conversation, and uh, I thought it'd make a good uh, meeting subject here. Uh, before we get into this, you know, a lot of people just fish natural lakes. They don't fish reservoirs, so uh, they really don't read the material. I think out of all the Buck's materials in the home study course, the subject on lake types and reservoirs is probably the one that doesn't get as much attention as everything else because... A lot of us just fish natural lakes, and we sort of cruise through the uh, reservoir portion of it. But uh, I believe Buck has said in his book and home study course that even though you only fish one lake or a couple lakes and you don't even have access to all these reservoirs, it will make you a better fisherman knowing how fish move, what structures look for in all these different kind of reservoirs. So even though you may not fish a highland reservoir or flatland or lowland or, you know, you mostly fish natural lakes, it will benefit you and make you better on your lake by understanding how fish move and all these different reservoirs. You, you, you can start putting together that it's the common feature. They're all using structure. And uh, I think it's one of the most often overlooked parts of uh, spoon plugging, all these reservoirs. And to tell you the truth, when I was putting this presentation together, it was uh, it was really fun looking in through, and there was a lot that I thought I knew what to look for in each type of reservoir, and it was a, uh, actually quite an eye-opening for me, and it was a lot of fun researching and checking these uh, different reservoirs and getting information on them. So, that, let's start here. Okay, as we all know, Buck has broken down reservoirs into three categories, highland, lowland, and as many of us know that Buck has two, you know, uh, when it comes to Highland, he has a Highland 1, Highland 2. When it comes to Lowland Reservoirs, he has them categorized as a Lowland Type 1, 2, and 3. And Flatland is a 1 and a 2. So let's take a look at Highland Reservoir 1. Uh, and this is all out of the home study course, you know. Nothing new by me. This is I'm just sort of recapping the the highlights of what Buck has for each type of reservoir. And in Highland 1, uh, the terrain is high, rugged, mountainous country or canyon. The reservoir is usually long, narrow, and deep. Many short coves. All shorelines are steep. Bottom is mostly rock. Water is normally on the clear side. And the key to fishing these types of reservoirs is finding the dirt. Uh, there's a couple of us. I, I know Steve Craig is uh, where he lives. That's all he primarily fishes is Highland Reservoirs. Uh, he can probably shed some light on this when we get some questions and answer maybe. Uh, but here is right out of the home study course what you know Buck typical Highland Reservoir will look like. Uh, in some cases you know they're all going to be steep. Nearly 100% of the shoreline or 95 plus percent of the shoreline is going to be steep like this. In some cases it's going to be sort of smooth as you see on the left hand side here and right hand side you'll have ledges you know and you know this will act as a migration route for the fish if if it's uh, situated where they'll use it uh, but that's how one 
Buck has a picture of it. Now I took this out of all these pictures you're going to see for this reservoir and all the other ones are from Google Maps. And if you don't know, you can go to Google Maps, and I think it's up on the settings. You can have it show the terrain, and it really helps you identify what type of reservoir you have or you're not sure about. You can look at the terrain surrounding the reservoir. As you can see here is the image from Google Maps for Canyon Lake. I believe this is Steve Craig's home uh, reservoir as well as uh, Ralph. Uh, you asked about this one too. And uh, this is your typical Highland One type of reservoir. It's easy to see just by looking at Google Earth there, the terrain, that you're in very high canyon country here. And here's a uh, one shot. This picture here is, I think it's this area right here is what we're looking at. This is probably one of the uh, only longer narrow bars on the lake, and I'd be interested to hear Steve Craig when I'm done here to let me know if uh, this thing sticks out like a sore thumb here. I would think that'd be a magnet for fish. I'd like to have you chime in when I'm done, Steve, and let me know if <laughs> what you've been doing on that one there. But uh, this is a typical Highland Reservoir. Very steep with the exception, with maybe one or two exceptions here, but very steep, narrow. I can't, I'm trying to see the depths on here. I think right here you've got a hundred and, uh, I think that's 120 feet right here. Oh, and I put a distance here. Thing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but they're, as Buck said, they're narrow. I took a measurement on here. This is 480 feet across. It's not very far. That's how narrow this, you know, this reservoir is once you get out of this area here. But as Buck says, Highland One reservoirs are narrow, long, and deep. And this is a perfect example of a Highland One. I found this picture on the internet. A really beautiful looking lake here too. But Buck says it's rock. You can see here. This is a canyon. This is all rock here. Uh, clear cut. No questions about it that this is a Highland One Reservoir. Okay, let's move on to a Highland Two. The terrain, once again, is built in high country, but is a little bit more spread out. The structures are not as deep and steep as a Highland One. The appearance of larger coves in some islands. Main Lake will consist of many short bars. Bigger coves will have some visible structures and workable. Watercolor will be mostly clear. The key to Highland Reservoir is better interpretation in deep water and better presentation of lures in deep water. This is probably true for most of the lakes we fish. In that interview we did with Don Dixon, uh, he emphasized this, that this is what separates the men's, men from the boys, that everyone, and this is what made Don so successful, that he was one of the best at interpreting and mapping deep water and presenting his lures in deep water. But Buck says that that's the key for fishing a Highland 2 reservoir. Now, here's the picture that Buck shows for Highland 2. And once again, it's very similar to a Highland 1, but it's a little bit more spread out. It's not as narrow. You might have a couple islands, you can see here. And uh, let me go to... Now, I was looking through at maps to try to figure out what a Highland 2 reservoir was. And I believe... Uh, Russ from the club sent me an email. I appreciate your input, Russ, asking about South Holston Lake on the Tennessee-Virginia line. Uh, he said it was a Highland Lake, and uh, I would agree with you that this is a Highland too. As you can see, well, first I've got the Google terrain, and you can see that you know it's hilly. It's not nearly as steep appearing as uh, the Highland one that we were just looking at, the Canyon Lake. But well, you can see that this is, you know, some hill, uh, hill, very hilly country. So once again, look at Google Earth, give you a tip as to what type of reservoir this might be. Now let's take a look at this. Uh, it said it's similar to a Highland one that you have many short bars, steep shorelines, which you can see you have all along here and these arms here. But it starts to get spread out and you see some islands and some humps. You know, here we got an island here. And uh, you got some humps you can see over here. And even though in these feeder coves, they're very deep and steep. But with the Highland 2, you'll have some longer features. Like here's a feeder cut. This looks like a really good area here. And again, this is a deep lake as well. I want to say most of the deep water out here is 
uh, 200 feet, 190 to 200 feet, most of this water here. But uh, in my opinion, this South Holston Lake is what I believe Buck classifies as a highland too. Once again, very steep, but you start getting a little bit spread out with some islands and humps. All right, that, now let's go in that lowland. Uh, these were quite interesting to research and get some information on. Uh, a lowland one, the terrain is built in rolling hill country. You have minimum amount of flats, very few steep-like structures. Bars are mostly ridge-like and go all the way to deep water. The main channel is quite wide and not that much deeper than the surrounding area. You know, these are all clues of when you're looking at maps to uh, figure out, you know, what type of reservoir it is. So minimal flats, very few steep-like structures. Most of the bars are ridge-like, and they go all the way to deep water. The channel is wide, not, as, not that much steeper to the surrounding area. Uh, nearly every type of structure can be found in a, high, in a lowland one. The bottom is mostly mud, clay, sand, and dirt. Uh, Buck has found out that many lowland ones are, are quite old, and uh, which probably means that a lot of the snags are uh, are gone. A lot of these older reservoirs, I can't remember if I wrote this in one, one of the notes or not, but the old, the early reservoirs when they were built, you know, I don't know, probably the 20s, 30s, and 40s, they uh, pretty much clear cut the reservoirs, all the trees down. Um, they went to is. It became later, you know, in the days, you know, probably in the 50s, 60s, 70s. They tried saving some money when they built these reservoirs, and they left a lot of these trees standing. So the older the reservoir, more likely it's going to be clear cut, and it's not going to be as snaggy. In a lowland one, Buck has found out that most of the time watercolor isn't a problem, and that most of the productive structures can be noted by shoreline features in a lowland one. We'll take a look at it. Well, this is what the typical drying buck has for a lowland one type reservoir. You're going to have steep steep shorelines down by the dam area. You'll have short structures. You'll have uh, you know possibly some humps. You'll have uh, some color, especially when you go up in somebody's coves and these feeder creeks. You'll start getting some good color. Rip wrap, uh, as Buck said, you'll have nearly every kind of structure situation in a lowland one reservoir. You know, in addition to bars, humps, saddles, you'll have your man-made structures, uh, submerged roadbeds, causeways, riprap. Um, when I was rereading the section on lakes, I mean, I can tell the way Buck wrote it. I mean, he went, he really went on and on about how uh, uh, you can sort of tell the way he wrote it that he really preferred lowland one type reservoirs. Uh, and Steve Craig had mentioned that uh, a textbook. Lowland One Reservoir is uh, this uh, reservoir located in Indiana called uh, I don't know what that is Cageless Mill Mill Lake. Uh, maybe Steve and uh, Brian could uh, talk about this one at the end as well too. But here again is a terrain shot from Google Earth. You can see uh, once we get we said it's going to be hilly country, and you can see that you know it's from the terrain here that the whole, it's pretty hilly around the whole entire reservoir. Not quite as steep as a uh, highland, but uh, you can. Let's go. Let me go to the next page here. Now, unfortunately, Navionics does not have a high definition map of this lake to really you have the structures jump out at you. All they really have is just, you know, I think it's only in 10, 20 foot contour lines, but you can see where the river channel goes on, and you could probably just do some interpretation and guessing that you're probably going to have. Maybe a good bar coming off of where this feeder creek hits the main channel here. You can see you got a really sharp bend here. I'm sure you got some, probably have a pretty good structure situation in this area. Uh, yeah, but uh, according to Steve Craig, uh, he says that this Kegels Lake, that's how you pronounce it, is a uh, textbook lowland one reservoir. Now, I went looking on avionics to see if, if I can find some other lowland ones as an example. And I came across, uh, what is the name of this? I think it was Percy Percy Priest Lake, if I'm not mistaken. 
I don't see the name on here, but I think that that's what this lake is. I think, yeah, it's just outside of Nashville. I think that is Percy Freeze. And it looked like to me like it was a, you know, classic uh, lowland one type of reservoir. This is, once again, the Google terrain shot. You can see that it's hilly, you know, country around the whole entire reservoir. And just by looking at the map here, you can see you got many islands scattered around this thing. I don't know if any spoon pluggers online or uh, a part of the club here have fished this lake. It's not far from Nashville at all, and it looks like an excellent lake. Uh, yeah, Percy uh, Priest Lake. This is a uh, shot at the uh, dam area, and as Buck said, yeah, you'll have long ridge-like bars that go all the way to deep water. It said, he said you'll have virtually every type of structure. Uh, all the structure situations can usually be found in a lowland one. You got this big bar. You know, it looks like some humps on top of the bar. Looks like it goes all the way to the deep water. Here you got a uh, bar coming off of this island here, ridge-like, going all the way to deep water. Looks like you got a nice big hump over here. Looks like a really interesting lake. I'd like to stop and fish this thing sometime. Here's another shot of the lake a little further down from the dam. Once again, you can see right over here, classic ridge-like bar. Looks like you got another ridge-like bar over here. Uh, you've got a hump over here. You got another hump over here. You got a feeder cut over here. You got a you know, couple bars coming off these humps over here. You got another hump over here. You got a hump right along the channel over here. And <laughs> I mean, just some great looking areas on this lake here. You, you know, you got more ridge-like bars coming over here. You can see some submerged road beds coming down this thing. I mean, this thing looks like a spoon plugger's dream. I haven't heard of anyone fishing this lake. I'd be curious to see if any of you guys have fished this lake. Uh, when we get to the questions, questions part of it, uh, please chime in and let me know. Boy, you got another good. Uh, this lake is just loaded with structure. You got another bar uh, hump over here. This thing looks uh, dynamite. Looks like you got another long bar coming off this thing here too. And this is only maybe 25% of the lake that we're looking at, if that. But this, in my opinion, is another perfect example of what Buck calls a lowland one type of reservoir. All right, now lowland two is also, you know, rolling hill country. It has features of both highland and lowland reservoirs. You'll find that the dam was built in a narrow gorge area. Um, and he says the bottom will more than likely have many snags. The upper part of the reservoir has flatter areas, which usually means it's an old farming land area. And he says the key to fishing a lowland too is going to the headwaters. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what I believe is a classic lowland two reservoir. Oh well, this is Buck's uh, picture. The dam is built in a narrow gorge-like area, so it's so. This section would be similar to a uh, highland type reservoir. And then the upper part of the reservoir towards the head of water or gets more spread out. Uh, you're going to have, you know, your steep, deep structures by the dam. It's going to be clear. As Buck says, more than a lot of these reservoirs of this nature you have brush and hangups down in the uh, dam area. Then you just go away. The lake spreads out. That's where you'll find longer features and your humps. And, you know, as the lake spreads out, you'll find your man-made structures, submerged road beds and causeways. And up and you get in the head of waters, you're obviously going to get some better water color as well, too. And I was looking through Navionics, and to me, this appeared to be a classic Lowland 2 reservoir. This lake is called, uh, probably butchering the name here, but Lake o o Ochia, something like that. This lake is just northwest of Hot Springs, Arkansas. Uh, my dad actually uh, lives in Hot, Hot Springs, and he's about, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes away from this lake. I did go to the dam just to take a look at it, and, uh, of course, it was clear water here. But uh, one of these days I'll probably fish it. But here's the dam, and you can see it's very gorge-like. You have, like, highland-type reservoir features here. Very sharp, steep shorelines here. And then it, the further away you get from a dam, then the lake starts spreading out. 
you can see over here, I mean, it really spreads out over here. You've got islands. You've got many humps, uh, spread out features here. And I'm sure more than likely you're going to have better watercolor with all these, you know, tributaries coming in the flatter areas over here. You're probably going to find better watercolor as you go up towards the headwaters. But this looks like a textbook, good example of what Buck calls a Highland II reservoir. Now a lowland three. This one was a fun one to uh, research. The terrain again is rolling hill uh, country. Uh, now it's the lowland three. Buck says is just the opposite of a lowland two. The flatter, wider sections are located at the lower end of the reservoir, and the structures at the lower sections are generally not that good. Most break lines are too shallow. Uh, that's what Buck says in the book there, that the, that in the lowland three, it's going to break too shallow for good movements of fish, that the, the deeper break lines by the channel, are, you know, it, the first bre break line is just going to be too shallow for the fish. Uh, and there, there's going to be a big flap between the bars and the channels. Well, the structures at the channel are normally too deep to work. And he says for lowland three, go to the headwaters, better color, and workable structures. Now, when I was looking all over Navionics, I had a really hard time trying to find out a Lowland 3 reservoir, but I found one that is just textbook, according to Buck. And he, well, here's Buck's drawing of Lowland 3. Um, the shoreline of the dam is in a wider area, and then it gets more narrow as you go up towards the headwaters. Um, you'll have deep deltas. You'll have deep channel break lines. The break lines towards the dam here are going to have sh are shallow break lines, as he wrote here, shallow shoreline structures. And he says his recommendation is to fish the headwaters, not to fish down here. The only time you'd want to fish down at the dam and not lowland reservoir three. I believe Buck says it a few times in his material if you have watercolor situation comes in we have really good watercolor then you might want to fish down here but lowland three he's telling us to fish more in the headwaters now here is looks like to me a perfect example of what he buck calls a lowland three this lake is called uh millerton lake if, if anyone knows where this is <laughs> you get bonus points but this lake is located in California. Uh, and you can see from the terrain shot here in Google Earth, the headwaters is very steep, narrow, just like a highland. You can see here, it looks, you can tell that it's very steep, high shores here. Then as you get to the dam, it gets flatter and not as steep at the dam area. But this is just looks like a classic lowland tree type of reservoir. Uh, here's the contour map of that. You can see up here in the headwaters that it's very similar to a highland. It's very steep, deep. Uh, it's still deep here even though you're up in the headwaters here. I, I don't know if I will blow up with this later on. But as you get towards the dam, it's more spread out. Like I say, Buck says it's just the opposite of Lowland 2. A Lowland 2 is Gorge like by the dam, and it's spread out over here. And this is just the opposite. It's wider at the dam and narrow and uh, you know, steep in the headwaters. But it looked like a, a good example of what a lowland three is. Oh, yeah, I got to blow up here. Uh, even up here in the headwaters, here, you've got, you know, this is still 100, over 100 feet of water. Yeah, 100 feet right there. Really deep. I think I think this lake by the dam. I think this lake is might as, be as deep as 200 feet. Yep, I don't have a dam shot there, but that was a little in three. Now the flatlands. Uh, we have a flatland one. Of course, it's going to be flat country. Uh, the dam may be built in hilly country, but the lake covers a flat area. That white. 
that is what might confuse some people. You see a hilly country, and you think that you, you might have lowland, but you got to think that the water is just covering a flat area. So that could be a little deceiving at times. But on a flatland one, as Buck says here, these are mostly smaller flatland lakes, usually under 100 acres to several hundred acres. Um, and the channel is always going to be your deepest water. The channel is usually narrow in these lakes. And the bottom is usually always going to be sand and muck. So one good thing is you're going to have good watercolor in flatlands. And the productive areas are going to be usually slight humps or break lines along the main channel. The best areas are usually sharper outside turns of the main channel. You're going to have your sharper breaks, your deepest water on those outside turns of the main channel. Here's Buck's drawing in the book, Home Study Course of a Flatland One. Really quite boring lakes, to tell you the truth. They're small, you know, usually, usually under 1,000 acres. Most of them are one, two, three hundred acres, if that. Not a lot of deep water. Like Buck says, the, narrow, the channel is going to be very narrow. I happened to fish a couple of these small, uh, Flatland One reservoirs last year. I was trying some new lakes. This lake here, Lake Dexter, is located in north central Wisconsin. And this was about 200 acres, I think. And um, it's just like it's flat, the channel. You can sort of see that the channel runs over here. And right over here, the channel made a sharp turn. And just like Buck said, you want to fish the sharper outside breaks of the main channel. And that's the only spot in this little reservoir when I fished it that I got bass was right here where it made a sh the channel made a sharp turn. So Buck was right again. That's a flatland. Here's another one. This is actually in the same area as the previous one. This thing was probably just under 200 acres as well. Uh, nothing here, but, you know, I didn't fish this lake, but I would probably fish where every that channel makes a sharp turn which looks like you have one over here we probably obviously want to maybe check out the rip wrap and run along here but the flatland ones in my opinion are pretty boring lakes to fish now our last one a flatland two uh obviously flat country buck says they're found on all parts of the country north, south, west, and east. They're usually large bodies of water. Uh, in Illinois, the largest flatland we have, or largest lake we have is a flatland, 23,000 acres. Wisconsin's second largest lake, Keenewalt, is a flatland, too. I think it's 18,000 acres. If I'm not mistaken, there's a bunch of flat, big flatlanders in Texas that are, I don't know, 50, 60,000 acres, so... Like Buck says, they are large bodies of water. And you generally have a very long dam in relatively flat bottoms. In most cases, the channel is much deeper than the flats. Channel break lines are sharp and well-defined. I can vouch for that. Uh, older reservoirs are mostly clear-cut. Newer ones have standing trees. I think I mentioned that a little bit earlier. If you got standing trees, more than likely it's built within the last 30 or 40 years. If it's built, if it's older than 30 or 40 years, it's going to be clear cut. Probably a lot easier to fish. Watercolor, once again, usually not a problem with a flat land. And the best structures are going to be bars, humps, break lines found along the main channel, and feeder channels. Uh, and the wide dam area and any roadbeds or causeways are good structures as well. There's Buck's typical drawing of a, what a flatland two looks like. You have a very long, long dam area here. In many cases, that's half a mile to a mile and a half, two miles long. Uh, you're going to have, obviously, plenty of flats. Depending on when it was built, you might have a lot of brush. Uh, the upper sections, we usually have causeways crossing it. You'll have riprap as well. Here is a Google terrain of Pedenwell. 
that's the second largest lake of Wisconsin, which is a huge flatlander. You can see that this is all flat here. This is mostly flat over here. You can see some little areas that you got a little bit of hills here, but they're very minor, mostly all flat land. Uh, here's the Navionics. This is all one foot contour, so don't get fooled that you think you got a lot of structure here, but this is mostly all flat. You can see where the main brake line is running here. Stand six out like a sore thumb over here and over here. But the problem most of the, with most of this is these brake lines usually are shallow. They break too shallow. You find some deeper brake lines. Um, many of you might know that this is one of my favorite lakes that I've been fishing this lake for, oh gosh, I don't know, 30 years, I think, since I, shortly after I started spoon plugging. And this, I call this structure here the center break line. I, I start my trolling pass here. It makes about a 90 degree turn in here. In the last 30 years, I've caught oh, thousands and thousands of walleyes off of this structure right here. It's one of the best spots on here. And until they came out with these high definition maps, spoon pluggers were the only ones out here fishing it for 20 years plus. Get a little sidetracked here, but I don't know, it was about 10 years ago. I came out here and all, I saw a couple of boats on here. I thought, what the heck's going on? I figured a local must have stumbled across it and told a few people. Well, I realized, I don't think it was that year, but next, the following year, that that was when high, these high definition maps first came out. So it sticks out like a sore thumb, but uh, anyway, that's a typical flatland reservoir. You can sort of see that the original channel is right here, winds down, makes a little turn over here and comes out. This might be a little side feeder channel. Looks like you had a little side feeder channel over here as well, too. Here's another example of a flatland, too. This is the largest lake in Illinois, Carlisle Lake. You can see the Google terrain map here, pretty much all flat around this whole lake here. An easy indication, looking on the map, that you've got yourself a flatlander here, a flatland too. Here's the long, narrow dam here. I, I'm sorry, long dam here. This thing, well, this whole lake is 23,000 acres. I bet you that this is at least a mile to a mile and a half wide right here at the dam. And there's the avionics map. You can see the thing is just flat as can be. Uh, if you zoom, if anyone wants to zoom, well, you, yeah, you can see the channel, like Buck said, is going to be very well defined, sharp breaks. It's going to be, you know, several feet deeper than the surrounding flats. So on these high definition contour maps, the main channels really stick out like a sore thumb here. You can see it running down along the shore, coastal shore here, and then coming in over here. And I fished many of these big flat landers, and I can attest to that, that the main channel you know, if this is the bottom, you're going down. I mean, it, well, can't see yellow too good. Let me switch to red. But if you looked at a, a section view or watch your depth finder, it'd be flat in that main channel. Boom, comes down and back up again like that. And that's really no exaggeration on how these channels are in these flat landers like this. Now, here's a... A wider shot of um, the couple lakes we just looked at. Here's Peenwell Flowage, which is a flatlander. This is all of the Wisconsin River goes over here. You got the Peenwell Flowage, a big flatlander here. Right below it, you got Castle Rock Lake, which is another flatlander here. You can see that the country here is all flat land over here. You can see it getting hilly over here. And then we continue on the Wisconsin River down here. You come to the next reservoir, which is right here, Lake Wisconsin. Here's a little flow up of Lake Wisconsin, the terrain here. Now, I'm going to end the presentation talking about Lake Wisconsin because this is sort of what started the conversation when someone asked this question a couple of months ago is what kind of reservoir classification does Lake Wisconsin fall into? You can see from the terrain shot here is it's not quite as flat as we've seen on the other flatlanders. Uh, 
Carlisle Lake or uh, Pinwa. You know, you got mostly flat, but you can see you've got areas, especially here. You know, it is a little bit of hilly country. But you come down here where the, the dam is right here. And you can see by this section of the dam area here, you would think looking at it, if you didn't see the terrain here, you would think that this would be hilly. and This might be more flat. But this terrain is indicating that here is pretty flat. And here's the Navionics map of Lake Wisconsin. Uh, if some of quite a few guys in the club may have the original maps that Terry O'Malley made, as everyone know, or or if you don't know, Terry O'Malley lived in the northwest suburbs of Chicago here, and he made back in the day, I want to say in the mid to late 60s, he mapped a lot of these lakes in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin, and he also mapped Lake Wisconsin. You know what? I should have probably scan those maps and showed them here, but uh, I just thought of that now. But most of the uh, structures that Terry mapped here, oh, well, they were here and here, and there was a, like a channel structure here. Uh, lake Wisconsin isn't a very deep lake at all. The, most of the water up here is no deeper than, I want to say, about 20 feet, 22 feet. The deepest water, obviously, is going to be by the dam area here, which is going to be almost 30 feet here. And as you go up, by the time you, if you got almost 30 feet by the dam, by the time you get up here, it's probably around 20, 22 at the most. And I think it's by the time you get up here towards the head of water, you only got about 15 feet of water. So based on what we just talked about, I would like to see what everybody thinks about what kind of classification you think Lake Wisconsin is. And uh, what I'm going to hopefully do here is pull up my Navionics and see if we can just start looking at some maps. Um, but I thought it was pretty interesting. Like I say, when I reason I thought this would be a pretty interesting webinar to do is when we had so many opinions on what kind of reservoir Lake Wisconsin was. Like I say, it is a, here, here, this is working now. And you can see you got a brake line here. You got a little hump here. But this is a pretty uh, well-known brake line. Terry map, mapped it years ago. Uh, loaded with this lake here, if you're not familiar with it, it is a strong population of walleyes and saugers. But... Zoom in over there. I mean, it, it's flat. This is one foot contour, so that you're looking at here. Here is another area. This is, I believe, Terry had said that this is one of the better structures in the lake when he mapped it back in the day, right over here. The main channel, original Wisconsin River channel, swung in really close to the shore over here. You can see you got some good bars over here, some good brake line across this whole thing. You sort of have a shallower brake line, and then you got a deeper brake line that runs out over here. And you've got uh, some uh, some spots over here. And let me see if I can find this uh, very well known. I, I think it's I think it's this right here, Terry call this peanut bar because when you mapped it, it actually looked like a uh, shape of a peanut. But I would say that in my opinion, I mean, this is, <laughs> we can probably still debate this, but I think that this is a, a flat land. Here's down by the dam area. It, it's just a it's just a very shallow break line. It just drops deep, and then it's just all original Wisconsin River Channel here. I don't know. I, I guess some people may think that this is not a flat land, but I don't know. Um, 
let me see if I can minimize this and see if anybody has any questions. Thanks for watching this part of the workshop on lake types. Uh, do what I do. Go on Navionics and just see if you can find yourself. I, I actually, I, I challenge you. Go on Navionics, spend some time, and see if you can look at what we just learned here. Locate a flatland one, a flatland two, a highland one, a highland two, and lowland one, two, and three. Uh, spend some time on there looking at it. Even though you don't fish these lakes or you haven't fished one, it's good to know the kind of structure situations, the kind of structure features you're going to have in these different types of reservoirs. And we're going to continue this workshop with the last chapter of the, of the workshop here. Part 8 is going to be just final thoughts and things I forgot. Uh, so thanks for watching and stay tuned for that one to come up.